They tried their best. They constantly sought the forgiveness of Allah. Allah will call them out on the day of judgment and Allah will say, you know what? You tried hard. We tested you. We tested you with the toughest of tests. But that's because we love you. The hadith says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves a slave, He tests him. He tests her. If you have problems, my brothers and sisters, remember, I do too. He does too. Everyone else does too. Of a different nature. We have issues. We all deal with it differently, depending on our closeness with our maker. This is why the verse says, give good news to those who bear sabr. To those who are patient. Give good news to those who understand they need to develop their link with their maker. And the hadith also says, عِظَمُ الْأَجْرِ مَعَ عِظَمِ الْإِبْتِلَاءِ The greater reward will be with the greater test. Apply this to the school situation. It's true. When you have a simple question, what is one plus one? I think they give you half a mark for getting it right. But when you have a long question that took you half an hour to solve, they give you 20 marks. Do you agree? The same applies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When He gave you a test that lasted five whole years, six years, you had difficulty, you struggled, you went through one thing after another, financial problem, social problem, health problem, spouse problem, every other problem you can think about, Allah will give you 90 out of 100 based on that. And then you graduate. When you, how do you graduate? You have to get to the prize giving. Where is the prize giving? On this side of life or that side of life? It's on that side of this life. <laughs> what that means is, there is a life that is absolutely eternal, that begins the day this life ends. So this is what I was explaining to the young lad, to tell him, you know what? You want to get to the prize giving without going to the school on that day, without climbing on the stage. You cannot, you cannot achieve Jannah without dying. If I were to ask you today, how many of you want Jannah, put up your hand. Everyone will put up their hand, right? The whole crowd. Who wants paradise? Everyone. But if I were to ask you, who wants to die right now? I think we all just look down. I don't want to die. But you want Jannah? Jannah is on the other side. May Allah make it easy for us to understand. This is the blessing of Allah. This is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Live your life to its extent. Allah chooses when you will die. You are not allowed to harm yourself. Allah says, وَلَا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Do not harm yourself. Do not kill yourself. Do not commit suicide in any way. For indeed, Allah is very merciful upon you. If only you realize. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us realize this. So, these are the blessings of Allah. We need to be patient. And that patience we will be able to achieve when we develop a link with Allah. Now, what link with Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will notice many times in the Quran, many places, Allah links two things. He links what is called sabr with salah. So He says, bear patience and establish your prayer. I can read for you a few verses. The first is verse number 45 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek help through two things. Sabr, and that is simple translation is patience, but I will get to the longer translation inshallah in a few moments. Seek patience through sabr. Patience, sorry. Seek help through patience. Seek help through patience and Prayer. What's the connection between the two? Let's go back to the hadith of Abu Malik al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sahih Muslim is narrated, is recorded to have said that At-tuhuru shatrul iman. That's the beginning of the hadith. He speaks of cleanliness. We spoke about that today in Jum'ah in the Friday lecture. That Cleanliness is half of your faith. It is a huge portion of your faith. You need to maintain cleanliness, not only that which is physical, but cleanliness in terms of a clean mind, 
clean in terms of your relationship with Allah, clean in terms of your relationship with the rest of the creation of Allah, your character and conduct needs to be clean, and you need to maintain cleanliness in every aspect of your life. But that hadith continues to say, وَالصَّلَاةُ نُورٌ الصَّلَاةُ نُورٌ The prayer, when we speak of salah, we are talking of the five daily prayers. And you can add to it that which is voluntary. Allah says that salah is a light. And then after that, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, obviously these are his words, but the message is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, As-salatu nurun. And he says, thereafter, when it comes to sabr, he says, was sabru diya. Sabr, patience, is a light. But a different type of a light. One might ask, what's the difference between nur and diya? Let me tell you. Go back to the Quran to see the difference. Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ ضِيَاءً وَالْقَمَرَ نُورًا Amazing verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is He who has made the sun ضِيَاء And He has made the moon nur. Two words used to refer to light. The difference is one is calm and serene. It comes with a beautiful atmosphere and an ambience that is different. That is nur. So when you fulfill your salah, as salah to nurun, salah will bring about lots of comfort. It is called qurratul ayn. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "I have been granted the coolness of my eyes in salah." So when you fulfill your prayer and you do it, you've washed yourself, you have a beautiful place and you start off Allahu Akbar, amazingly, there is a beautiful, serene feeling. It is something that is filled with contentment, just like the light of the full moon when you are to look at it. It is white. It does not have a burning in it. It is cool. You can look into it. It is absolutely beautiful. You achieve contentment, beauty, calmness, and so on from your prayer. But when it comes to sabr, sabr means patience. It also refers to restraint. Let me take a moment to explain to you the three categories of sabr. Sabr means that patience, normally we just use the term patience. But when you have to fulfill the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the strength that is required to do it is also known as sabr. I am bearing sabr because I need to fulfill the laws of Allah. There are two major types of laws. One is the do's and the other, the don'ts. So for the do's, I need sabr to do them. To get up early morning to read Salatul Fajr, subhanallah, is not a joke. Get used to it. It becomes your habit. You will open your eye automatically at the time of salah because you're used to it. Your body has this computer that is amazing. Hey, that's a gift of Allah. But if you're a person who sleeps any time, any day, you're not worried about it, it's going to be really tough. You put one clock, two clocks, three clocks, and each one of them you press snooze, snooze, snooze. And still, when you snooze, you lose. So you've lost your salatul fajr. That's what happened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.